Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. This video is part of my sewing pattern adventure series. I've been trying to make a real effort to sew with sewing patterns from companies that I've not used before. And um, this time it's Marilla Walker and it's the Bellamite dress that I've made both a dress and I've hacked into a top. But I did just want to say, I'm really sorry, I've been away for a little while. I haven't actually been away, but I just took a little bit of a break. Obviously it's been Easter, uh, I also had a birthday this week and I've had children have all been home from university. But the truth is I've also started at a new gym and I have spent the last couple of weeks in agony and doing anything has felt like an awful lot of effort. I've been at that stage, you know, where you're picking up your own legs to walk up the stairs. So um, yeah, I'm only just starting to get used to it and have the energy to do much else. <laughs> uh, but I'm back now and hopefully I will be new and improved in only a matter of weeks. Let's see. The other thing I did want to also say is that on that last video, I think it was the last video anyway, I had, uh, it was part of the Frugal, no it's not Frugal Frocks is it, So Frugal 22, um, I was offering my Paddington top uh, if anybody wanted it. There were 18 takers, I put all the numbers into a random number generator and off the top of my head I think it was number two was the one that came up as the the winner. Um, I had put a comment on that video but that with my email address. Uh, that person hasn't emailed me yet so if you were one of the people that said you might want that top uh, go and have a look at that video and see whether I've yeah let you know. Anyway let's get on to the pattern. So Marilla Walker has lots of you may have used some of her patterns already. She has been around for a little while. She sells her patterns through her Etsy store but also quite a few fabric companies um, supply them and I, I presume bricks and mortar shops do as well. You may remember I showed you the Nanny Iro fabric I had that's um, a double gauze with a green stripe on it and I knew that I wanted to hack her Bellamite dress into a top for that and that's what I've done. Uh, now I have to say that Marilla did give me the pattern so I didn't pay for it but I'd already earmarked it. That may even have been after I said I was going to do it. I can't quite remember, but yes, just to be upfront and honest. Um, but in fact, what happened was I got so carried away that I ended up making the dress as well as the top. So I've got both to show you. She's got a really nice range of patterns. Um, I particularly like her Iska shirt dress. It's a really, I mean, who doesn't love a shirt dress? Um, it's a really lovely pattern. Uh, obviously it's a traditional, fairly traditional shirt dress but I really like the wrap version of it and uh, that's been on my radar for a little while. But this one is kind of higher up my list. Since the weather's got better, I've been wearing my valley dress top that I made a little while ago quite a lot. And I wanted something that was similar, but perhaps not quite as billowy as that. And I really like the bodice section of the Bellamite dress because it has a fairly fitted centre front panel which comes either as a v-neck or a button through, still a v-neck but button through. And then it has quite a big oversized sleeve that comes out from the centre front panels. It's got a couple of uh, three sleeve options. One is a long sleeve with a really fabulous gathered wrist uh, the other is a shorter sleeve that's more like a wide fluttery sleeve and then there's what's called the bonus sleeve option which is the same long um, gathered cuff but with pleats that kind of radiate down that centre front panel and I really like all of those options. I also really like the skirt part of it because Depending on what fabric you use, it could look quite architectural if you use something stiffer um, because it has a, a lower section and a top section. If you just look at the line drawing, you'll see what I mean. Um, but also because it's quite high-waisted and that for me can be a bit more flattering um, because it means that it's nipped in at the waist at my slimmest part. So those are all the things that attracted me to it. Now, as I say, I did 
originally planned to do the hack and I have got that and I will show you that in a sec but while I was having a look at it and working out the best way to hack it I found myself thinking I just want to do a dress <laughs> and when I was in London a few weeks ago I didn't buy very much fabric but I did buy this one piece of fabric from Simply Fabrics in Brixton uh, and it's a seersucker which is just always I'm fairly sure it's 100% cotton um, seersucker is always so nice to wear isn't it in the warmer months and I thought it would be a really good choice for this dress I'm not 100% sure that it was only because it has a zip at the back and because obviously we've got lines and squares I've had to pattern match that you know hopefully you can't really even see <laughs> where that zip is um, but in fact there is one and I was not very pleased with myself for choosing something that so obviously needed to be matched I did have the good sense to make sure that those um, bodice pieces at the back um, were going to match but inevitably the first time I put the zip in they were slightly off and it took a bit of fiddling around so uh, yeah if you do make this pattern don't do it with a fabric that needs to be matched across that back because both versions do have a zip yeah don't do that <laughs> uh, anyway look I'll go and put it on and you can see what you think so here I am I have to say that I really really like the dress I'm super happy with how it turned out it's giving me exactly what I was looking for so um, I love these kind of statement sleeves and the amount of gathering that there is at the wrist um, yeah really like how that's turned out I feel like the fit is really nice so it's as fitted as I wanted it to be but I've still got plenty of ease because the last thing you want when the weather is warmer is to be feeling all you know constricted who needs that and I love how this seersucker fabric feels to wear it's light enough that that kind of slightly structural element of the skirt part of the dress isn't necessarily massively showing I think if you wanted it to be very structural you'd have to use yeah a, a much kind of firmer fabric but I still really like the shape it's giving and I'm getting what I was really hoping to get from it which is that with my shape and somebody with you know that has got a bit of a tummy because I haven't got gathers around the skirt here or anything and it's nice you know it's flat fronted but still plenty you know plenty of movement and ease there that I really like how the shape is working for my body type um, really like the bodice I love how the arms work coming out from this center front panel and yeah I've already showed you but I love my pattern matching at the back um, so all in all I'm really really happy with how it turned out and um, the dress is designed for a B cup and uh, the instructions say that that you know what denotes a B cup is a five centimeter or probably two inch difference between upper bust and full bust now mine was six centimeters so I figured that was fine but the instructions um, which by the way I have to say I do think the instructions are fabulous um, the instructions give you a really nice detailed explanation on not only how to do a full bust adjustment but also a small bust ad adjustment which is not one you see as often and you know not all of us have big busts so that's really good um, I would say in general you know sometimes you get you get instructions that are a bit rubbish we've all had them you get some that are really really good these are really good but they're the sort that are really good with bells on so you know lots of information on you know how to adapt the pattern if you have you know like me I've had to blend out at the waist as per usual uh, you know alternative cuff use you know you can use um, you know like a ribbing or a cuffing for the cuffs alternatives for that all sorts of extra bits and pieces um, yeah really impressed good size range so they are kind of unconventional size range uh, not size range uh, categories 
in that they go from one to ten and a one has a hip measurement of I think it's 34 inches and the largest size goes up to 50 and a half inches so it's a really nice size range as well um, and I do like it when they're not kind of in line with standard sizing because perhaps not those of us that have been sewing a while we know not to go by our shop sizes but it's better to just avoid that isn't it um, so yeah really nice size range as well as I said I have done my usual blending up at the waist so I was a size 5 at the bust and then I graded up to a well, two sizes up so up to a 7 at the waist and the thing you've got to bear in mind if you do that is that your sleeve piece is forming part of the waist so if you are like I had to adding a little bit extra at the waist you've got to do it on the sleeve piece as well as on the bodice piece and um, so yeah it's just a little bit more unconventional but I really like how that works I did try <laughs> to not pattern match as such but I tried to at least get the lines down the side on the side seam where I had the darker lines to at least kind of match. But the one thing that I didn't do that I should have done is I didn't pay attention to the sleeves. And I like the fact that the grain line on the sleeve runs that way. So your print is, if you've got one, is going in a different direction. But I forgot to make sure that they were the same. So they're not hitting the bodice part at exactly the same point. Am I being fussy? Yes, I probably am. A um, couple of things I didn't do, I didn't add the ties. There are ties, yeah, waist ties, you know, that just go around to a bow at the back. And that's for no other reason than it's just not my cup of tea. Not overly fond of um, ties on a dress. Just personal preference. There is, however, one downside. And I'm a little bit annoyed with myself for not clocking it earlier on. And that is, hello no pockets um, normally I try to make a point of checking whether there are inseam pockets on a dress before I make it and if there aren't then I'll add them myself because it's not that difficult to do um, and I forgot to check and I could so easily have done it um, and it's kind of yeah it's a bit strange I sort of yeah uh, I suppose if I really could be bothered, I could unpick and put some in. I can't remember, there must be some scraps of the fabric left. I can't remember, because I made it a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, I might be good and put some inseam pockets in. But yeah, I suppose that's my only criticism. Pockets. <laughs> so this is my top. You've seen the fabric already. Um, I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out, but I did have to really put my thinking cap on about how to hack it because, because the waist hit, where is it, here, obviously it would be a bit cropped for what I wanted. I wanted the kind of thing that I could wear with jeans or with um, shorts as we get into warmer weather. And um, yeah, so I needed to extend it. And because of how the pattern pieces are, I've got a wasp, which is really, irritating me in here. I wish it would just sit down and be quiet. Um, yeah, because of how the pattern pieces fall, if I just extended them down, I have to do that obviously at the bodice and the two back pieces, but also the sleeve because that is all one piece. So that would need to extend down, but also outwards to accommodate for my hips. And I wasn't sure about whether I wanted to do that. I thought, hmm, will it start to look a bit more like a shirt? And I'm trying not, <laughs> trying not to do shirts. Um, the other alternative was to, in effect, make it use the dress part and just sort of stop it kind of here-ish. And so I made a toile using that option. I did do, I always knew that I wanted to do the button up front for the top. Um, partly because I didn't really want to have to have a zip on the top. Again, it's just a personal preference thing. I'm not a fan of having zips on tops. Um, and I suspected that because I don't have the biggest bust in the world, 
that if I did the button up version I could get it on over which I can I think if I was bigger busted that may not be quite so easy and I probably would have to put a zip in the back but I just um, eliminated the seam allowance and cut that on the fold um, so as you can see in the end what I did was I have gathered the bottom rather than using the skirt part because I did make a toile and I went and had a look to see if I've got it and unfortunately it's already been stuffed, <laughs> used as stuffing for something. Um, but when I did that as a toile I just didn't like it as much and I thought oh no I feel like I want it gathered. Anyway I'll put it on, hopefully that will become clearer. So here it is and I have to tell you I am so happy with it. Um, I know that it's going to get worn all the time, especially now because we're at the point in the UK where, or certainly in the Northwest, where it's feeling a bit more spring-like but it's still a little bit cold. So if you go out in the t-shirt you're ending up sort of feeling a bit... And I know that this is going to work perfectly for now but at the same time when it gets really, really warm because it's really nice and light and that double gauze, um, yeah, it's going to work beautifully. And I can see myself swanning around, you know, in a pair of shorts as the weather gets better. Um, I think it's worked really, really well by adding the peplum on. Um, so do you see what I mean? I just took this measurement here and um, divided it by one and a half made it 25 centimetres long and just added that on and I think it works well. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I did a post with a variety of different button options because I got my buttons from uh, Maggie at Textile Garden and I've said this before but she has the most beautiful selection of buttons and um, a lot of them come in packs of sort of five or six and because this was only a little short run I decided that rather than just taking a punt on one set because you can never really tell too well can you um, just online I would order a few because green is one of my favorite colors so I'll always use green buttons so I had quite a few to choose from and I was struggling to know which way to go so lots of people kind of yeah made their suggestions on Instagram but I'm really pleased with the option that I went for and I'd really recommend going and checking out some of Marilla's other um, sewing patterns she's got a really nice range there another independent female-led business I was thinking about it actually this top has been kind of come together by all female-led companies because uh, Draper's Daughter, where I've got the fabric from, is uh, Karen, and the pattern is from Marilla, and the buttons are from Maggie at Textile Garden, so somehow that feels quite nice. But I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. Um, yeah, so I'm glad to be back. Uh, I will be back a little bit more now. I've had my little Easter break, um, and I can actually function. <laughs> I'm not an exercise person, and it's really taken me some getting used to. Um, not sure what my next video will be. Whenever I promise something I find myself changing my mind so I'm kind of trying to learn not to do that. So yes thank you very very much. I love to read all your comments so if you've got any feedback please put them in the comments below and I'll be back really soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.